Hey, I'm Ryan. This is my brother Daniel, and this is Rolls in the Family. Today, we are back at it again back. with another month of top plays. Top three plays of February. What is it, 2024? 2024. So. Let's go yes, with that, it. That sounds right. <laughs> um, so this is where we just look back at all the games we played in the last month and what are the sessions that rose mm. to the top for whatever reason we feel compelled to talk about them on camera to you. So here we are. <laughs> so here we uh, are. We, we, we will include uh, links to all these games in the description below if you want to check them out for yourselves. We also yes. would love to hear what you've been playing recently. What are some games that have really landed for you? Share it in the comments. It's yeah. always fun. Us, us board gamers, we like talking about games that we play. It's, Sometimes, you know, people drop a comment and it gets us thinking even, hey, that's one maybe we need to acquire. You know, yeah, you could you could convince us, or we have to come and say, yeah, we actually got rid of that game because we didn't. Oh, like it. that is always the. It's awkward a little more one. awkward, but yeah. uh, you know, sometimes it happens. It does happen. Yeah, but let's uh, let's get into it. Uh, we'll start with Daniel's number three. Oh wow! Okay, February. I'll start. Caught yeah. me off guard there. Yeah, it's only uh, like every other month we've ever done. <laughs> um, my number three, Ryan, uh, is a. Game. You know what's funny? I actually don't remember if this was on my last month's uh, top plays. It might have been. My brain's in a fog. So you, uh, <laughs> no, no plays from January on this list. Anyway. Yeah, sorry. You can't just reuse um, it. Uh, no, but this game is uh, one that we played many times together and must have hated it because we got rid of it. But now it is back. Now that we don't have to play together. Now that we don't have to play. To, yeah, a weird correlation. Played together, yeah. got rid of not played together in top plays this goes to summoner wars um uh, yes you're on a summoner wars kick here yeah you know what my uh wife and i got uh uh got to play summoner wars again and i was reminded again that this uh second edition is just a so solid in that it takes everything because when summoner wars was out of our collection i was very sad and uh kind of had that nostalgia of man like mm. that game is was so good you know there's it's such a good game yeah for context we played it like 70 plus times yeah like the we, two of us we back in played the day. So it we was definitely <laughs> we definitely experienced some rewards so to have that much experience and then to see just you know when they t they take like this great experience from the past but then just refine things and you're like mm -hmm. oh man that's actually just a lot better what they did there and the there's and the various things that they kind of refined in the game through uh the dice rather having kind of unique symbols that kind of make uh it makes melee attacks a little stronger than uh than they were in the previous game before kind of yeah. ranged and melee were kind of equal whereas now it's it's a little better and all that sort of stuff um they just did a lot of improvements there but my wife and i had a lot of fun uh trying out uh because i got the master set we were able to try out a uh, a totally another random, you know, pair of uh, of factions. So I was the Cave Goblins uh, going against. That's, the... that's an OG. It like, is Cave an OG. Goblins. I think yeah. was like the first ever first edition set that we got. Well, and you're gonna have to remind me because, and as I was playing, I couldn't remember if they changed. It felt like these were different than the Cave Goblins Probably. of old. Probably. Yeah, I would yeah. assume so, because I was like, did I just forget everything about the Cave Goblins? Because this feels very different. It's possible. It was a long um, time ago. But the Cave Goblins were, were a really fun faction because uh, so much of kind of their uh, ability is around um, kind of bringing people, bringing units back to life. So you have a lot of these free units that are just like tiny little guys and they're dying, but you are constantly just trying to... Uh, bring out units from the dead which is obviously huge in a game like summoner wars where you only go through your deck once yeah. so bringing yeah. people from the discard pile back out is is pretty huge and uh and i the champion was i, I remember one specific champion the eater was so cool that was in uh, the og was that in the og yeah I, yeah maybe, i remember maybe the i am getting maybe that was how it was before i i don't fully remember i mean but, the first edition came out in 2009 i think yeah so it's been a hot minute but the eater is was just so fun because it's it's one where every uh he's super strong i mean my gosh mm -hmm. he's like might be the best attack that I've seen in a champion, but the end of every round, he has to eat. If he didn't That's kill right. someone else, yeah, he has to he has to eat a, like one, of, one your of your own, own units right yeah. next to him. So there's which is really you know if you're killing 
their units, it's great. But then I'm like having to like throw my units to keep him to going. Keep and keep them yeah. going uh which was just super fun and and whatnot and um and so we had a so the savannah elves were, were kind of interesting I, i'd be interested in her you know playing her being able to play them again and they had to this because in i don't remember this in the first edition this being able to like boost units like you're actually able to like play boost tokens on them hmm. um which yeah, I, remember. I didn't remember that and so their whole thing is like their summoner is able to like mo- take boost tokens and move them around and different units are getting boost so they're like she's like manipulating all these tokens around and whatnot which was kind of interesting um but it was not enough the eater just was uh going on a rampage there and uh and i was able to get the win but uh again you know obviously two months in a row ryan i mean that's that yeah. says something of it being on the top plays uh it really just, it, it says that either daniel doesn't play very many games or some well is and this season of life i will say it is two uh, things can be true <laughs> two things can be true but it was a it was a ton of fun and i've been i'm super happy to have that one in the collection again and um one that just more and more has me thinking when next time we are uh, in the same physical location that is one I would love to play, to play together again because I think it would be a combination of nostalgia with they improved a lot of things in this. Um, so yeah, yeah, so, I definitely want to get it, and like I had decided that kind of even before you got it, it was honestly me talking about me being interested that got mm-hmm. you to even consider it again. Um, I just don't play two player games as often, so it's hard to like want to prioritize getting it. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's just super solid, and like for that type of two player dueling but it's spatial like there's yeah. the spatial element not just like dueling um, without well that was that. the whole thing is my wife and i you know I, I, like i'm not into i'm not good at chess or anything like that but it does kind of give me that feel of like the grid spatial yeah you know well and it's around. got the whole you're just trying to get the summoner and, and, and so you yeah, gotta you're protect trying to go for the, the summoner so it's got some uh you know some similarities and so yeah. um yeah it's uh, it's been a ton of fun, and that's why it is my number three. Very four. nice. My number three is one that I think you had on a recent list because you actually Ooh. just acquired it. Um, I have had it for a very long time, but it had been a long time since I played it, and that's one reason it's making the list here is just because it was had been so just long got to get to, this to the table. It wasn't even a fun play, but, but yeah, I hated it. A- but you had to. No. <laughs> You finally got it to the table. This is Mechs versus Minions. Ooh, Big I, cooperative man, game. I didn't know you got this one to the table. That isn't nice. as, uh, you know, it looks so big and grandiose, but it's an example of game that it's actually like a very accessible, uh, not very long game yeah. that's easy to introduce to people. Um, so I had a good group. I was like, this is a good opportunity to get it to the table. We had four of us, and I, I figured everybody would like it. Mm-hmm. Um and we played one of the later missions because, like, a lot of times when you're introducing a group, it's like you play yeah. the same like. So this early was ones. an experienced. Gr- this was people who had played it before. No, two of them had never played before. Oh, okay. But no. I was like, there's not a lot yeah. that really prevents you from being able to go further up. Right. So we we played the scenario. I guess as minor spoilers, if you're a uh, whoa whoa, if you care about whoa, like when, boop, the fifth scenario boop, or whatever it was in boop, a game that came out. Uh, boy. 14 years ago and isn't available <laughs> yeah, it's anymore. It's like at this point, come on, it's <laughs> yeah. not a spoiler. <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah. not really. Um, but it's a scenario where you're trying to get from one end to the other and you have to move, you have to tug the bomb. You need to pull the bomb over all of the repair pads along the way mm-hmm. to get it to the end. But then all the while, there is a giant firewall behind you, like lava mm-hmm. or something, that is like moving. And so it's this like, we got to go because this thing is going to, you know, it hurts you yeah. or hurts the bomb. And the bomb has limited health. And so anytime it gets attacked or whatever, um, so you lose if it loses all of its health, it explodes. But every time you go over a repair pad with the bomb, it does heal one. So you get a little bit of that back as you're going. Mm-hmm. And so this was initially set up to be a not very good play because we did not play it very uh, smartly, I would say. Uh, we were like, okay, you know, you're going to be the one that's going to, you know, run with the bomb and the rest of us will kind of get out there and kill minions. Yeah, well, the, yeah. the problem is it's very easy when you're trying to move the bomb to accidentally like leave it behind. Oh, totally. One of, one of the biggest yeah. reasons is if you're pulling it. So if you're pulling the bomb every two movement, 
pulls it one and moves you one. Yeah. But if you have an odd number of movement, <laughs> yeah, then you, then you then pull it and the then bomb. you move away from it. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, oh. no, I'm like. <laughs> and so we actually got into a situation where the bomb was behind all of us. And we're like, it's well, this is bad because it's kind of hard in this game to like turn around and go get something yeah. that you forgot. And so then, you know, the lava wall is coming and the lava wall has this thing that every time it hits a repair pad, it escalates. So it starts going two spaces every round and then uh, three yeah. spaces. And so we hit a point where we're like, oh my gosh, we really just messed this up. We are going to lose, like almost <laughs> certainly. Um, but what then escalated it into a top play of the month is that somehow, some way, each round, we would find a way to survive. It was like... We're going to lose this round. Like, mm -hmm. is there any way we can, like, stay alive another round? And it would be like, oh, you know, if I go first and go this way and you push me, um, you know, like, or, or you, you push me first, I'll be in position that I could tow it enough that it'll be one past yeah. where the lava wall is going to go. And then it was like, oh, we'll get it to the repair pad, which will give it to two health for the bomb then it's going to get hit by the lava wall but it'll go back to one health so we're still okay we had a we had a turn where we strategically pushed one of us between the lava wall and the bomb so that the lava wall would push the mech instead of the bomb mm -hmm. so like the bomb was safe but the person who was getting pinned was the one that took the damage and so it was just so it seemed so hopeless, like they, especially yeah. as it's escalating. Because whenever it hits those repair pads, it's going faster. But we, it was probably five rounds in a row that we like thought we are going to lose this round. Like, like, is there any way we cannot lose this round? And we mm -hmm. found a way, and we ended up on the last round winning. We actually got it to the last repair pad, and that's it was awesome. just you know, it's like that's an ideal kind oh, of cooperative yeah. experience is when you reach the lowest of lows with your team's yeah. like hopes, and then you right. you salvage it. Um, so yeah, just a really good session. Just a lot of the fun of that. I mean, we've talked about how that's a game that when you're doing well, it's fun, but even when you're doing kind of bad. It's still fun because like yeah. people are getting the malfunctions is fun and like trying to just figure out what's going on. There's almost always funny moments in every game you play of this, um, whether it's somebody getting a lot of damage or somebody that's just because you have to execute your whole line every mm -hmm. time. And like you're just adding cards to it. So a lot of times the things you're doing, you don't really want to be doing, but it's like, yeah. You know, I turn this way and I fire Ripsaw three times like into my teammate for no no reason and then do yeah. something else. And it's just it's funny. Um, but yeah, great to get it to the table again. I love the scenario variety. Like I hadn't played that one in a mm -hmm. while and it was a fun, different thing. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I know we talked about it recently and it's a shame it's not in print because I, I think it's a game that both of us would be like <laughs> this is a great one for a lot of people go look to check on, out go look on facebook marketplace if or you something. ever see yeah, you yeah. ever see it uh come up second hand it is just it's one of few games that fit in that category of like what we would call so like people would call a gateway game or a welcoming game but it's a big game. Like it looks so cool, Incre and it's such a yeah, big it's like experience. One of the best produced games, and I usually own. you don't get that with the. And it's yeah, it's fun to have that because you. It's fun to impress you know that group and give that group that kind of premium experience right. that sometimes you only get with these bigger games. Well, I tell you what, Ryan. What game? I mean, I'm I'm having a hard time thinking of a game. You know, obviously, kind of you know around that that weight that delivers as consistently of a fun experience as that one you know like you were saying even if you do terrible there's still gonna be fun like funny so like even yeah. in the worst case because like you have some games where the worst case scenario it's just not that fun right the game just yeah, yeah. goes poorly and you just you're like okay well Maybe play it again. But like this one, even in the worst case scenario, you're still gonna have at least some funny moments, something memorable. Um, I just find, man, the floor for this game is just so high. It's pretty high. It, yeah. It yeah, just we delivers. were close to having what would be kind of the worst case scenario, which was we thought we were gonna lose very prematurely. Oh, okay. Like we so were gonna maybe really be done loss. in like twenty yeah. minutes because we made such well, a blunder. That just sounds by, like your and that, that, your problem. Well, it would have been our problem, but it also would have been a <laughs> bit of like, okay, that was a bit of a bummer that I we just blame you know. Um, the I think the only other way that it is kind of not as ideal of a play is I've had a few plays that we like dominate and like it never it's even too was close, easy. which okay. is still pretty fun, honestly, right. like because you're just like knocking out yeah. minions and stuff. Um, but it's nice and you can 
strike that yeah balance. i mean that's the that's our us and all cooperative games right we want that sweet spot and yeah how often can a game deliver that sweet spot for you that's a huge thing we're looking for yeah so this was this was first time to the table i think and it may have been over two years which is just a tragedy did you just after seeing me play it you were just like yeah, yeah. i gotta get this it's out. been on my list for a while of like when i have game days it's like that's when i want to consider it. it just always like hasn't quite gotten chosen and so finally mm-hmm. did it but it's like it's not like it's a hard game to get to the table i mean really i mean you have a group of three or four that yep you know, play with new people, play with ones you've played with. You can, yeah. It works well with like more gamer people yeah, or totally. less. Um, so it was a reminder that it's maybe it's just because it looks so big on the shelf. I like store games on top of it, so it just looks like it's hard. Oh, to I know. Get it's like right out next to Twilight Imperium, and you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm not like, uh, touching those. <laughs> so good to get it to the table. Makes it onto my list at number three. Wow, nice, Ryan. Yeah, that was. I did not. Know I feel. That I got think to both table. Summoner Wars and this were on our last month's. Uh, I just copied and pasted. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, hopefully, we have something new to talk about. <laughs> People are going to just leave the chair. Uh, I think this one's new. <laughs> That's I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm now questioning myself. Uh, this one uh, is a uh, semi recent to the collection in that it's you know within the last year or so. I we've talked about it, or I've talked about it several times, and it is really shooting up as one of the top games for my wife and I to play together, especially for her. She loves this one, and that is going to go to Ultimate Railroads. Wow, yeah, this has been a hot one for you guys. Well, it's a hot one because it's the one she's always asking to play. Yeah, yeah. So hey, like, there's okay. worse problems in life know, than your, your wife begging to play. I know, Ultimate I know. Railroads. I put up with it, but, you yeah. know, okay. You do what you got to do to salvage, do the, marriage, to salvage the marriage. But, the marriage yes. yeah. Um, yeah, so we got to play Ultimate Railroads again. We played once again with the uh, Germany module. So that was the same one nice. that we played last time. Uh, love that module. There's the whole uh, taking kind of the the three railroad tracks, but then having gaps in it. And you can actually, you know, there's tons of options of how you can fill it. I mean, it's just variability, customization, like all the things yeah. we love. Um, so in this game, it was a, man, it was a riveting game because, so I, uh, and I actually, if I had to say one like slight con of the game that I don't love is I, I, I never like this in games when at the beginning of the game, I kind of feel like I just have to choose a yeah. route there you isn't know, like the upfront variability yeah. to push you <laughs> there's not yeah there's not enough in fact there's not a lot of variability yeah like if the, you're playing the same map you're pretty much starting, starting with the a, same situation and so i and so basically the variability was i got the uh i don't know is it the engine you know those uh engineers or whatever that you're drafting that you yeah. uh you can go and take the action and take them. And they're pretty powerful, like unique actions. So I got one that was uh, specifically good. Uh, it, or it gave me uh, the times two multiplier that you can put on that middle uh, railroad that yep. that can ultimately get like the gold track. And so I was like, okay, cool. I've got the times two multiplier action right here. I'm just going to go all in on the center railroad. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did. I didn't even touch the other two. I didn't do anything on the bottom. I went all in and I was scoring a crazy amount of points. I was doing a lot of things just worked out and I was doing awesome. Whereas my wife over there, co- totally different thing. Like she's doing a few little things. She's going crazy on the bottom. Uh, yeah. That's um, like, the like picture like the wrench yeah i know it's <laughs> and the it's wrench got, like, and the thing moving along abilities. um so there's a lot of like d- very different paths and and whatnot and i think w- one of our favorite parts about the game is the uh kind of things that you unlock during the game like when you get those little idea tokens like anytime you can trigger getting one of those i mean those are just incredibly powerful um and so it feels really rewarding but the arc of the game was so cool, uh, even though it ended in my demise because I was doing so well to the point where it got to final scoring. And I want to say I was almost, I was maybe 80, 80 ish to 100 points ahead to like where I, she even said, like, dang, like you really yeah, had a good, no like, way. there's, and, and, but, but not realizing how much in kind of the end game scoring there is, because she had a few of the end game scoring cards she was able to kind of acquire throughout the game. I didn't have any of those. Um, and then there was a few other things, but she like came all the way back and it landed uh, on a tie and she got the tiebreaker for the win. Wow. I mean, it was just like one of those endings that was so epic yeah. because she had just said how uh, 
you know, just had kind of conceded. Yeah. And, and exactly. I had, I was, I thought so too. I thought, I was like, I thought I had it. And, but just to see it come all the way back, get, get the tie and then win the tiebreaker. Uh, that was a pretty memorable ending. Um, but man, that game, it, it, it really does deliver every time. Like if you, if, if it just had more upfront variability, it, it really would be like in that next, in tier that like of, next yeah. tier of literally like top, five to seven games like right there well the Um, other big thing with it is i remember uh i think you sent me like a screenshot of when you guys tied in this yeah and the thing that jumped out to me is you guys played it in just over an hour it was like under 70 minutes or something and like i don't think you know i think of that game with a lot of games that like like, take a lot longer yeah and so once you're starting to think of it, like for a two player game that you're playing it in under an hour and a half consistently, yeah. there's not a lot of other games that are giving you that much like meat. Yeah, no, totally. It's it's I mean, we feel like we're playing one of those heavy hitters and you get to the end. Yeah, and we're just over an hour. Um, it, it maybe does. I think both of us sometimes feel like. Oh my gosh, the game's ending. You know, yeah. like you're, you're, you you kind of you almost wanted. wish like you had another round to kind of your your the the engines to see the mm-hmm. engine kind of play out. Um, but that one's it's it's been a ton of fun, and um, I mean, there's still the USA module. Uh, there's the like an Asia Asian one, one Asia one or something like that. That's got some unique stuff. So still a lot to explore in that one, but. Um, when the wife keeps begging to pull it out, you just keep saying yes and saying playing because yes. especially when it's a really fun one. So, yeah, yeah, that one's been a hit. Credit to Ryan for the recommendation on that one. And uh, yeah, that's been a, it's been a hot one. So there you go. That is my numero dos. dos. I was going to say uno because it you committed to Spanish there. I didn't know if you're going to be able to finish it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. credit risky move. to my risky high move. school Spanish teacher yes, for that shout one. out shout out I know she's watching uh, my number two <laughs> is a new game to me this was my first play of it but it's a game that kind of has a lot of history behind it um, because it is history. actually the third game in a series um, of games within the same system this is going to be Age of Innovation a terror okay. mystic game, yes. I, so I think, is actually the cord. tagline. Yeah. And so, okay, to get some yes. I'm excited to hear here, about this, Ryan. Sell me on we, it. I want to buy yes. this one, Ryan. Sell yes, me yeah. on it. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> so, we got Terra Mystica way back. We did. Um, you know, that was, I don't know if that came out in what, like 2012 or something. Mm-hmm. And it was probably around shortly after it came out that we got it. Um, mm-hmm. Played it quite a bit. I mean, quite a bit for a big game like that. It was probably like 12 times or something. Yeah. Um, enjoyed it. We really liked Terra Mystica. Yeah. Um, and it was in my collection. I had the, what is it? The Fire and Ice expansion or whatever. Yeah, you um, did that Then one. they announced Gaia Project, which was the next iteration in the series. Um, and kind of, it wasn't like replacing it. It's, in, it's kind of how they've approached the games in the system. It's like, because like Terra Mystica is still really popular, mm-hmm. supported. There's like competitive play. They've even released expansions, I think, for it. After, I think they've announced more, even though they have these other yeah, games. Yeah, that's now. interesting. That, that whole so it's model. like, yeah, it's like in parallel, these different game systems. Hmm. Um, but Gaia Project, when I researched it, did a lot of things that I really, really attracted to me to it, uh, particularly on the front of variability, which we've talked about a lot that that just like speaks to us. Mm-hmm. And on Gaia Project, it was like there's now a modular map, and now the, uh, the tech tiles aren't like always with the same tracks like it's randomized and you yeah. get these, there was just a lot more like variability in the setup um and so i love that and i i got it now guy project was definitely like a step up in complexity um because mm-hmm. it added this it adds this extra whole phase with gaia p- planets and how you can turn a trans dim planet into a gaia planet by doing a gaia project and so it's this whole new system on top of what's already a pretty like yeah. complex game. Right. Um, and so really like Guy Project. It's been like in my top 10 games, I think. But it was always a very hard one to get to the table because it's like one of the crunchiest strategy games I have. Um, it's a brain burner. It's a brain burner. Uh, and so Age of Innovation, I heard announced. At first, didn't really think much of it. But the more I looked into it, the more I felt that it really took 
the best from both of the previous Terramist Gun Guy products and kind of puts it into one. And so Age of Innovation kind of goes back to Terramistica in a lot of ways. Like it looks like Terramistica. The map and everything is closer to Terramistica. Like really it's yeah. It's closer to Terra Mystica than it is to Gaia Does Project. The, is the, are the shapes of the pieces still the same kind of weird? Like, you uh, know they're how different. The, uh, they're are different, they different now. Okay. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing that kills me. So I had to teach this game. And in each iteration, they change what all the oh, buildings so are called. you're just called. calling it all the wrong So I'm stuff. just like, oh my gosh, like this is now a school <laughs> and a, and like it used to be the, like yeah. the trading. I mean, I just like trading mixing up all my terms, and, but yeah. killing me. Yeah, they're guilds now, I think, instead okay. of trading posts. So that was very challenging. Um, but the big thing that they now do is they take a lot of kind of that variability that was in Guy Project mm. and apply it here. And there is kind of a new system, but not in the same way. Like the Gaia Planet thing was like a whole new like part of the game you had to kind of learn. The really the new thing in Age of Innovation is there's now a resource of books that you can get. And it's actually interesting how you get books because when you go to get a again, I'm mixing up my terms. It's not technologies. It's okay. A, the viewers will forgive you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> the viewers, the viewers um, will forgive you. It's on the tip of my tongue. But when you go get one of those power tiles, yeah. that, I think that, I think that's Terra Mystica's power tile. I've now said both <laughs> of the other ones. Um you can kind of decide, do you want the one that like just sends you three up on the track, which are now like the, I'm not going to, they used to be a cult track. It's not like <laughs> education. I don't I'm just going to do it. I'm going to end editing. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Every R- time, R-Bod. every time you get it wrong. Yeah. That's difficult. Um, so you could decide to just like go up three on that, or you could get the one that like you only go one up on that, but you get two books of that color. So there's mm-hmm. kind of, and because the, the like texts or whatever are randomized, that's always going to be different how those like match up. But the advantage of getting books now is books can one be spent for, you know how there's the power actions on the board that you can spend power to do like yeah. a double build or whatever. There's now three book actions that you can spend books to do, which one thing I like about that is it's, randomized those three are variable so mm. there's like six of them and you only use three of them in the game Very nice. but then the main thing you use books for is getting these innovations so that's where the age of innovation comes in which again at the beginning of the game you completely randomize those and those are all like big abilities or big score variable scoring things that you can pay these books to get yeah. um and so love that system like it's tons of variability in there really cool powers and abilities another thing that's cool is the way that they kind of decoupled the faction boards so in the previous iterations it was like if you had the red faction board you always got like the red ability with it and Mm -hmm. that was all just like one thing whereas now the red board is its own board that has a slight ability that makes it different from the other colors besides the fact that red is like the home terrain then all the factions abilities are separate and can be mixed and matched with any and then they also decoupled the uh, whatever that biggest building is, the monument, or here I think it's, I don't remember, Academy is one of them. I the have Coliseum. no idea. Coliseum. Um, so usually in the old games, that always was like a faction specific ability. Mm-hmm. Where in Age of Innovation, you now at the beginning of the game, from a bunch of them, you randomly put out like two more than the number of players. And it's whoever builds it first gets to draft one. So hmm. like it's kind of a. So again, that's completely customizable. Like you could have any color with any faction ability with yeah. any one of those abilities, depending. So there's just a lot more like permutations of how things could come together. Hmm. Um, and so we had a really great game of it. It was a lot of fun. We had uh, two players that had never played any Terra Mystica game. I um, mean, it was a four player game, um, but just went really, really well and kind of solidified for me that I think Guy Project's going to be on its way out the door. And it's not just to be clear here. This isn't like, Oh, it was so much better. It's like an incremental step. But yeah. for me in the Terra Mystica system, it's the version I would want to yeah, play. And like, I can totally see people who would want Gaia project more, maybe more, you know, it's not yeah, like it's and maybe I can try better. To, but. Cause I was trying to think through this. Like what are the things that for me, cause Gaia project has a lot of that variability. I talked about that. I think what makes it a little different, I think is Gaia project adds a little bit of, complexity in ways that I don't like as much as the way that yeah. the, um as in Age of Innovation. I also, while initially I liked the mapping guy project because it's got like the planets spread out and it felt a lot less like I'm getting blocked by other players because it's you can like fly past people. You never yeah. really get cut off. 
the more I've realized that like the Gaia project, it is kind of hard to like parse the board and like, where am I at risk of getting blocked? Cause you have to like know how far can p- other people get away from their point? It's like, it's yeah. all like spread out. Whereas in Terramisca or age of innovation, because the hexes are all, it, right there's there. no o- open space. It's very obvious, like where your next opportunities are, who's close to you to cutting off opportunities. Mm-hmm. So I think I actually kind of like that dynamic. It's yeah. easier to tell like where power is getting generated. I think in Gaia Project, it's like within two spaces, which is just a little bit extra to kind of like notice. Um, so I think that's that's a piece of it. Um, and I think I just like how the variability is done a little bit better. Gaia Project, that tech board in Gaia Project, all the variability is just like thrown into that one board. And it's kind of a lot to take in because you're like, it okay. Is. Like there is an advanced tech at the top of every track. The, you know, uh, technologies or whatever are assigned to the tracks. I'm going to go up, but then the tracks are also how you upgrade your abilities, like upgrading yeah. your navigation or upgrading how much you're. And so you're like having to weigh all those things. Whereas now some of that's decoupled, like it's back to Terra Mystica where like increasing your terraforming efficiency or your sailing is just separate tracks. Those are separate actions. So that's no mm. longer like part of deciding which tracks to go up on, mm. which I actually think is better <laughs> for me yeah. anyway, because it's a little easier to separate those concerns and for me to kind of parse how I'm approaching yeah. it strategically. Um, yeah, you know, no, maybe I, maybe it, my brain just isn't at the level <laughs> I mean, to, to take to in Gaia year, project, Brian, but, but uh, yeah, no, so. I, I, uh, I, I think it kind of, d- it is interesting because we tend to always favor like heavier games. Like we, we very tend much to, like, yeah. but it is an example of where the increase in complexity really is at a cost for us. Cause I would agree with you as well that it was at the Gaia project. It was like, man, this is really cool. Like it's cool how the whole mm-hmm. tech board and all that, but man, it's just, it's a lot. It's a, and it's honestly, a you're probably still gonna feel that way with Age of Innovation. Like yeah. it's not a far step, okay, <laughs> but wow. it just feels a little more right to me the way that it is. Uh, it feels cleaner. Um, nice. And so yeah, and it, I maybe maybe I'll be able to over time as I play it more like better. Maybe we'll have a video someday, which is like you know Terra Mystica versus Guy Project versus Age of Innovation wow. to kind of uh, I'd watch that compare like why you might prefer one of them um but as of right now i'm like confident that age of innovation is the one i felt like the faction abilities like the abilities on the stuff was also just felt more powerful or more cool and maybe i'm just not remembering stuff very well from like what powers are in the older games but definitely like i noticed it like when we brought out because at the beginning of the game you like pair up a random color board with a random faction with a random starting bonus tile which are like those tiles that you draft in every round yeah um and then you draft from those sets it's like which set do you want which is a very cool kind of start to the game and i remember just thinking like ooh, these are like really cool asymmetric things we have going on here as far as the different choices i was the illusionist that like all the power actions at the bottom of the board i could do for one less power and i scored points i think it was like three points whenever i did that so my whole strategy is like use as many power actions as physically possible as I work in my strategy. Um, but yeah, nice. it's one I think you're going to have to try at some point because you like the games in the series so far. You had I even do. gotten to the point where you were maybe considering Gaia Project. Um, I was. Uh, I think Age of Innovation, like Gaia Project, also plays better at two. They've done some things to make it nice. work better at two. Yeah. So, yeah, that'll be we'll cool see. to try out. It's not the easiest one to get to the table, but... It's okay. Very strong, positive first impression for Age of Innovation. But not strong enough to be your number one, apparently. Not strong enough to be my number one. Okay. Um, speaking of number ones, Ryan. <laughs> Good um, segue, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> That's as creative as I'll get. Yeah. <laughs> but I appreciate you noticing. Um, speaking of number ones, my number one is a new game to my collection. Got to play it for the first time. Uh, every single game on my top plays was just me and my wife. Uh, we've been uh, wow. we've been grinding. Yeah. Um, this is one I very much look for looked forward to trying. Uh, because it just uh mechanically just seemed so solid. Um, and I 
think it absolutely delivered on that. It's one that I think you will thoroughly enjoy as well. Don't know if it'd be interesting to see if you uh, ever consider owning it or not. But this is going to go to Grand Austria Hotel. Mm, yep, this is this has been high on my list for a while of one that I've wanted to try. Yeah, so we, uh, you know, as as I tend to do with acquiring games, the guy was, uh, you know, someone someone happened to be selling it nearby. There's so a deal, it and Daniel starts twitching if, a little if, bit. If, if there's, a, you know what? If there's a deal, there's a way, Ryan. That's uh, that's my. I, life I've realized motto. that like I get these messages from Daniel, and I realize I am literally the gate to determine whether Daniel goes and gets this game or not. <laughs> no, I knew this one was good already. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I uh, I was able to pick this one up and. Looking into it more was just super excited because it just seemed like it had such a just cool system with kind of how how mechanically it all worked. Um, and so my wife and I were able to try it and uh, and it was great. It really was. I mean, the whole just, uh, you know, how everything works together in terms of, you know, first thematic, I think I think it's just is great. It's got great themes. Because you're like running a, a hotel. You're running a hotel. Yeah. yeah. So you've got these, uh, you've got, you know, customers coming in and they've got preferences of like, um, you know, what room, what kind of room they want to be in. There's kind of three different types of rooms and then also what food they want to uh, eat. And so they first come to your diner and you have three tables. And so you each, you really, if you're playing well each round, you want it, you can take one um, new guest and you really, want to every round be- yeah. because if you're not you're missing out like missing out but the problem is you only have three tables and so if your tables are full you can't take another guest well once they get to your tables you then have to feed them that you have to get the food that they uh, have on their card and so there's there's you know ways to do that and but then once they get the food then you can try to move them to the room but to get them to a room you have to have a room prepared you know, open so you can move them there and flip them to the room. And so there's like this whole chain process that needs to happen. So you're trying to like manage, you really do feel kind of that. That's where I feel like thematically, it's pretty good. You're like trying to manage, okay, do I got the rooms ready and this person's coming Mm -hmm. and all of this. So, so theme wise, I thought that was a pretty cool, but then uh, I love the whole dice system in the game of how you're taking actions where at the start of the round, uh, you roll all these dice and there's basically, uh, six actions uh, for each side of the die. And so all the ones are dice are going to be put on the one action and all the twos to the two and so on. And so whenever you take an action, the power of the action is how many dice are at that space. Mm-hmm. So if there's three ones there and I take, I take the one action, I'll take one of the dice but then I can run, you know, I think maybe that I think the first action is like taking either strudel or uh, I forget which of the food yeah, it is. But I don't have any games that let me take strudel. It's like, yeah, Might there's like to. strudel uh, or I don't know, maybe it's cake. There's wine. Uh, uh, gosh, I don't remember the yeah. others, but there's four but, different types of like food things. And so you could take three or something like that. Um, and so that's really interesting. But then the actions are getting worse every yeah. time someone takes an action because um cause yeah it's like a weird variation on like it's it's almost like worker placement because you're like choosing mm-hmm. which one to take but instead of you playing because you could imagine it almost being the same where like you place out workers and then the more workers are there the action gets less efficient mm-hmm. like that would be like kind of the same effect right. but it's kind of done with the dice it's a very clever and yeah. I feel like there's a lot of examples of, I mean, it's kind of just a Euro game thing of having a core system yeah. that provides a lot of that interest. Yeah. And it's, and so, the, and so that's really interesting because you're kind of, uh, now one nice thing is uh, the sixth action is basically you can take any of the actions one through five, um, I think at a minus one power or, 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 or no, you just, I think you have to just pay a dollar um, to do it. So okay. you're you're never fully, but you do it at the level of the six. So like if there's three yeah. dice on the six, I could do the three action as if I had three. Yeah, because it's kind there. of interesting if you don't roll a number, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you well, because what what's interesting is you can at any point. It's a snake. So drafting the dice, it's a snake draft, which actually is one of the complaints people have of the game. Is if you're playing with more players, like if you're first, you have to wait 
you know, let's yeah, say it, put, could be you know, one, two, it could be six that turns. That is the, before... the problem with snake drafting. Yeah, is I, I'm, I'm actually not a huge a fan of snake downtime. drafting, to it's be like honest. It's like fair. It's f- more fair, but it also like means more downtime. Right. And then sometimes you and then you have to go back to back and you're like, oh, my gosh, oh, I didn't even think about what the second thing was. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, or if you're strategic, you'd you know plan it. But anyways, so you're so you're doing the snake drafting. But at any point you could pass before all the dice are taken. And and then basically what happens is once everyone's either taken all their actions or passed, you then take all the all the dice that are still there and re-roll them. Or no, you take all the dice, you set one, one goes to the bin, so, so that's to make it less powerful, but then you re-roll them. So you can kind of gamble on hoping that the re-roll gives you a better, dist- you know, the action yeah. that you were wanting, but you're losing a die every time you, you wait for that to happen. So, so that was a really kind of interesting thing I haven't seen hmm. in, a, in a game before as well. So that whole system combined with just the managing and efficiency and all what's cool is every single customer you know has whenever they get into their room and you you fill them in a room you get some cool ability and there's all these uh unique there's a ton of unique cards that uh, i forget what they're called but uh you know think of just a typical game where you're playing cards down that give you special abilities and stuff like that yeah Um, so there was a lot of variability that i think would make it a, a ton of fun each time but uh yeah, I can't think of a game I have that has kind of that um I don't know it it almost it gives me this is a really weird comparison but like a great western trail vibe in this terms of just like almost the cyclical nature of it of just like you're kind of just doing the same you're like running the same thing of like moving from here to here to here and then you're back. Mm. I don't know. Maybe that's that's it just uh it it was a really cool um process and and all that sort of stuff and then uh just managing multiple things at once i think was was really fun and so yeah it's kind of an um, efficiency puzzle yeah so we got to play it once uh we uh had a great time with it um i think are there expansions to this one ryan there is an expansion for it there is i forget Um, what it's called i want to say it's like something with a ballroom I That's think right. I think good. so too. Yeah, I've actually, I think so because I think I heard some pretty good things about it. So I'll have to. Uh, but everything you described just now sounds great to me. Like it, it yeah. is really like my kind of game. Yeah, um, it's the yeah. same. I think it's the same design team that did Lorenzo Il Magnifico, <laughs> and we love Lorenzo Il Magnifico. We do love that one. So enough that it's like okay, yeah. keep an eye out for this design team. I know they yeah, have a f- quite a few you, other games. I'll um, be excited that, for you to try this one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Very That's nice. One. Yeah, it's always it's always nice when you pick up a game that I'm like considering. So although then it like feels like I it's like, well, now I can't buy it because it makes <laughs> way more sense to try it with you try before it. I make yeah, a decision. Yeah, I know. You should so you might actually that. be delaying me getting it by I'm getting it. I'm sorry, Ryan. Come on. Sorry. Yes. Well, my number one is not a new game to me. Mm-hmm. This is a game that we both have. We have both played a lot, and we have talked about a lot on this Whoa, channel. I know what this but is. There was this <laughs> specific play. It uh. had to make the list. It just, it just had. This to. could have either Sorry. been your number one or the worst game that you, uh, yeah. or the worst play. So, you have dear viewers, we are yet again going to talk <laughs> about Agricola, <laughs> but. This uh, was a pretty unique game of Agricola because I have played what? What am I up to? Like almost ninety or something games of Agricola, that's and I've never had a game of Agricola like this game of Agricola because I played Agricola this past month oh. with six players, which the original Agricola did not go to six players; it went to five. The new revised edition <laughs> goes to four, but there's a five to six player expansion. Good thing you picked it up. Which I'm glad I picked up. Yeah, I picked up because I'm like, I'll kick myself if I have the. I was Literally. thinking the opportunity to play five because we've yeah. played five in the past. Yeah, it's good. Um, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, when am I gonna play six player Agricola? <laughs> like, what is this? I, I I don't have that many people in my life that like want to play the game. It would be very long. But the stars aligned this last month yes. that I had a group of six where all but one of them had played Agricola and the one that hadn't was like one that I thought would like Agricola mm-hmm. and, and would be interested in learning it. 
and we had time and it was like, okay, we have a group of six that wants to do like a bigger game. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm like, you know what? Agricola might not be a bad option here. And like, I wouldn't have done it if I didn't think it was going to go well. Like I, I'm trying to like put us in a I good told situation. You it was a bad idea. But I'm like, worst case, it's going to be long and have downtime. Like that's going to be like the thing that's going to be a little hard with six. Mm-hmm. But I honestly was kind of blown away by how well it went. Like, yes, it was long. We I What'd think clock clocked in, in at? at three hours and twenty minutes. Okay. That said, six at no point was anybody around the table feeling like it was long, which that's mm. what you want with a yeah, long game right. is everybody's locked in. Like we could have gone another hour and I don't think anybody, everybody was so just like into what was happening mm-hmm. and engaged with the game. So that was great. And honestly, like that's not that bad for six people. Like no, normally, um, I, you know, I if you're a half honestly, hour if, per if, player, you, if I was guessing, I was going to guess you were going to hit a four hour game. To be yeah, honest. and we had a comp- a brand new yeah. player. So that's, um, that's some of them good. had only played one or two times. That's pretty good. Uh, so that was yeah, that was very good. Um, and then the downtime between turns. Yes, there's quite a bit, and man, is it brutal if somebody takes star player. <laughs> when star player moves, uh, oh. you know, to your left, and you went from being first to being oh, sixth. You feel it. That is brutal. Um, but even the downtime between turns, there's so much to think about on in Agricola when it's not your turn. And so usually you have a lot to kind of chew on while you're waiting for others to go. And then I found, you know, even if you know exactly what you're going to do, if there's a few people coming before me, I'm going to start thinking about my contingency plans of like, okay, Mm -hmm. I want to do this as my first choice, but if they take the wood, then what am I going to do? And so, you know, I probably at the table was the one of two of the fastest players as far as people that had played Agricola a lot and just like... Um, you know, it's a bit, uh, prideful view, but okay. Well, I'm just saying, just like more experience playing Agricola, <laughs> and yet I did not feel like it was like, man, I'm waiting around, yeah. you know, for it to get to my turn. Nice. So it could not have been a better experience for the whole group, honestly. Like it really just worked really well, and it got me thinking. I was like, and you know, I asked you this question or somebody watching this video. If you're looking for a game that's you, you like want to play a big main event type game like that. And you have six people. What games in your collection are you considering? Yeah, for you mean specifically for a heavy for a strategic strategy game. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of in that way. Because the answer for me is I pretty much don't have <laughs> none. One. Like right yeah, now, Agricola. And, and after this play, suddenly it's like you know what? The Agricola would probably be the answer now yeah, in that scenario because most it, games in that it's five is where they five cut is off. usually the max. Five's the cut you know off. Twilight Imperium goes to six, but that's like a completely different category. Yeah. And and honestly, even thinking of games I don't have, there's not that many. I mean, you have Power Grid, which I think goes to six. Yes, which is maybe does. close to that. Yeah, you know, I've never situation. It with six, but yeah. Um, and I'd actually be interested, like, if you're watching this, I'd, like, legitimately would be interested in hearing Scenario in the comments. Confluence, I mean, that's a whole different... That's, 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 really that's different, a whole yeah, different that's, thing. That's really different. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'd be curious, like, what people think in their collection would fit that. Because um, suddenly I'm looking at Agricola in a whole new light of something oh. that I would have before said, yeah, I couldn't probably recommend playing Agricola with six, to now it's like, this fills a niche that I don't know I have another game that can fill that niche. Now, it's not a niche I have coming up very often. But to know you have I mean, it. Maybe, maybe a decade before I have that situation again. Yeah, that's but, a, yeah, but that's I amazing. had it, and it perfectly filled it. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I have to... And kudos to like the revised edition and how they made it work for six, because obviously you change the board spaces. Mm-hmm. And so there's like tons of extra spaces. There's like an extra family growth that just immediately becomes available once you get to round five. Yeah. Um, there's a few of the spaces that like if you go to one of them, the other one is considered blocked. So they're like paired oh, spaces, spaces, which is okay. kind of interesting. Huh. All the all of the major improvements have duplicates under them. So there's that are actually slightly more expensive. So like Okay. You know, because obviously like a lot of people are gonna be wanting to get an oven or a fireplace right. for their strategy. Um, so I think they did yeah. a really good job. We we mixed in some of there's the five to six player expansion added some cards that are specifically five plus oh, like occupations to get to and use those so cards. Throw it's those so in, great. and so there was some more. And yeah, it just 
I couldn't have been more pleased by how it went. Wow. And I was I was having a giddy old time. Now, granted, I love <laughs> Agricola, so just playing Agricola is a yeah. great time. But it was like, man, the energy at the table was so good, and just yeah. like, um, so there you go. I had it had to be the number one for the month. That yeah. was very early in the month, and I was like, it's going to be hard to hard to yeah. beat it. Well, when you told me you were trying that. My yeah. initial thought was that's a horrible idea because it I, felt a that little just, risky. Right? It just was like, man, that's like that could go so long or something. But to hear that, yeah, it delivers like that. It kind of it does make me think, man. I sh- need to just get the five to six player expansion at some point just to. I have definitely it, think you, know? you should because I mean five players is even more reasonable. Right. Like that, that could come up. Um, yeah, but that's a. That's incredible. I, I, once, I'm honestly curious how many people have played Agricola six player. Six player, because like, it can't be that common. Let us know down in the comments that people have gotten have this to the table. Six player, which you always like. It's one of those things you know, like the design team like had to do all of this like play balancing and play yeah. testing for six play. You know, for that player count, and then nobody's playing it that way. But 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 you, yeah, can I attest. think you, uh, yeah, if you were on the design team for the Agricola five to yeah, six, player drop it down team, in the comments I appreciate below. Let know. us know. Yes. <laughs> that would make my day so hard if somebody was like, I didn't oh my gosh, I was I poured the last like yep. eight months of my life into balancing this. Huh. So there you go. You know, I we, we talk about Agricola a lot. You know, we're not gonna always it's not always gonna make my top for the month. But man, six player Agricola. Six player Agricola. Six player Agricola. That, enough said. Enough said. That brings a close to our top three board games of February twenty twenty four. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end or jumping to the end if you skipped around in the video. We've got links for all the games below if you want to check them out. We've also got some other videos on the channel here, and we will see you in the next one.